I started my architecture degree alongside 500 other students. Fast forward five years and only 50 of those students successfully graduated. Only 10% of those 50 students are now practicing qualified architects with a thriving career. That means you only have a 1% chance of a successful architectural career. In today's video, I'm breaking down exactly what architectural software you need to know in order to be in that top 1%. If you stick around to the end of the video, I'll share with you exactly what you need to do to work smarter and not harder, but yet still be in that top 1%. Now let's break down these architectural softwares into three different categories, design, render, and present. Each one of these categories is critical and you are going to need to learn all of these softwares at some point in time. So first of all, we're gonna talk about the design category. Personally, I believe there is only the two architectural softwares you need to learn and master during your university or college degree in order to be successful. The first is Archicad and the second is Revit. Now, I know I'm going to upset a lot of people in the comments down below by only recommending these two softwares but there is valid justification. Archicad and Revit are extremely well known and extremely well used in the industry around the entire world. That means your likelihood of success and your likelihood of landing a job with a firm that uses one of these two softwares is absurdly large. Even though there are great architectural softwares out there that many of you suggested in my last video, some of those unfortunately are not commonly known. So even if you want to go out and learn Vectorworks or Chief Architect or anything like that, yes, by all means go ahead, but keep in the back of your mind that a job is the end goal, and without this, you're most likely not going to have a successful thriving career. That's why I always recommend students learn Archicad and Revit. I'm not saying learn one or the other, I'm saying learn both. This is where the most critical piece of information in this video is. If you do not learn both, then you're setting yourself up for a 50-50% chance of landing a firm that uses that software. The worst thing you wanna do is apply for your dream job and then them tell you, oh sorry, we only use Archicad and you've learned Revit. In my experience, knowing both softwares and having both of them on your resume is critical to successfully moving forward. Now next we move on to the rendering category. And again, there is only two pieces of software that you need to learn. In this category, you can learn either or, you do not need to learn both. Now I recommend Twinmotion and Enscape. There is again, a very valid justifiable reason why I recommend these two pieces of software rather than going ahead and learning some really high-end rendering softwares. So both Twinmotion and Enscape will give you relatively good imagery in a relatively short period of time. Subject to the quality of your computer, you might even be able to get some exceptional renders out of these simple software packages. Nonetheless, you're not looking to be an architectural visualization expert. You're looking to be an architect who's going to architecture school. So therefore, my best recommendation is to stick to these lower end architectural rendering softwares. Otherwise, there is a very high likelihood you could end up with some amazing 3D renders, absolutely, but then get pushed into a corner at your new firm where the only thing that you focus on is 3D renders. So for the next five, 10 years of your career, before you're able to advance anywhere or talk to anybody, all you're going to be doing is pretty pictures. And that's not what any architect who is going to architecture school wants to do. Last but not least, it is critically important that you understand how to present your work and also how to present yourself. As an architect, one of the best things you can do is actually present yourself and market yourself. That's why I recommend all three of these softwares be learned very, very early on in your university stage. First of all, you're going to need to know Photoshop. You're not gonna to need to know all the intricate details of Photoshop, but you're gonna to need to know the bare bones essentials. Photoshop is an overwhelming program if you've never used it before, but it is a very simple program to do all things architectural related. I do highly recommend all students elect some sort of graphic design course. That way they can learn Photoshop and everything under that umbrella relatively quickly and not have to understand everything that Photoshop can actually do. Alongside Photoshop, you also wanna learn Illustrator. Illustrator is where you're going to be able to produce some incredible diagrams. And as we all know, architects love diagrams. Nowadays, not many people will put pen to paper, but many people will put mouse to computer. So our architectural diagramming skills need to be on point 
and this is how we convey some of our most simple ideas in the quickest way possible. Illustrator is another one of those Adobe programs that is so complex, but you only need to know the bare bones essentials of diagramming and what vector graphics are rather than just pixel graphics, and why they are so important to everybody as a practicing architect. Last but not least is InDesign. This is basically the one-stop shop that you're gonna be able to compile everything into and create some of the best presentations you've ever done in your life. Now, there are a million and one versions of Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign available on the market. I'm just using these three as the fundamental principles. So Photoshop allows you to edit, manipulate photos. Illustrator allows you to create amazing diagrams. And InDesign allows you to package it all up and present the best thing possible. The best part about learning these name brand softwares is that every architectural firm is most likely already using it. Therefore, when you place on your resume, I know Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign, this is a huge green tick for anybody reviewing your resumes. Not to mention that presenting amazing quality work is going to land you a significantly higher grade at university or college compared to somebody with a great design but exceptionally poor presentation skills. The worst part about this list is that yes, you need to master all of these softwares if you want to increase your chances of being in that top 1%. However, if you know what kind of architect you want to be, and if you know what architectural firms you potentially want to work for, then there is a chance you can only master some. If I figured this out early on in my university career, God knows where my career would be today. However, I did manage to figure it out at the end and it was one of the best things that projected my career into the place it is today. What I recommend to everybody right now is make a list of your top three architectural firms that you wanna work for and not just firms that you wanna to apply to. After you've narrowed down your top three firms, make sure you email and call every single one of them. And if you can, also try to arrange an in-person meeting. Ask for just three minutes of their time. Don't ask for five, 10, 15, ask for three. You wanna ask for an extremely short period of time that most logical people cannot say no to. You wanna make sure you come into it very quickly with rapid fire questions to get in and out of three minutes so that you respect their time and they respect you. But in the same time, you wanna develop these relationships. So by simply forming connections with architectural firms you wanna work for, you not only figure out what architectural software they use, how they render, how they present, and how you can master those exact softwares, you also build relationships with the person that will most likely be hiring you when you finish your degree. Anyway, that's all for me today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. My name's David Tomich, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you check out the playlist to the side of me for great architectural content. If you loved this video, I'd appreciate it if you smash that subscribe button. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. But like always, I will see you next Monday.